Yo, what up YouTubers, it's your boy Altertech back again with a new video and in this video I want to talk about me going ahead and buying a Moto G6 brand new in 2019 when we already know the Moto G7 is right around the corner. Now, in this video I want to talk about the specs and price and compare them with the Moto G7 and then I want to go ahead and talk about the Moto G6's performance, the camera, the features, and the updates. Now, to start off, I want to go ahead and talk about the price of the Moto G6. And as for me, I was suckered into buying this from QVC.com. We had this attractive young woman talking about the Moto G6 and how it was affordable and how it had all these cool features. And she got the best of me. In handling, let's talk more about okay, what's so included. Okay, so three biggest features. Camera we talked about, screen size we talked about, also the battery life on this. The battery life generally lasts you a day and a half. So now from QVC.com, they had it for right now, it's about 169 if you go ahead and hurry. But for me, I got it for 159.95 tax and with the $5 promo code, it came up to $165. This is a jump on it price yeah. because this price goes away at the end of the day. So does the free shipping. Or you could probably do five payments of $33 and some change, which is what I did. And now let me just uh, put this in perspective. The Moto G7, it's estimated to be retailed at $300. Now, if you do recall the Moto G6 last year, it came out at about what, 250 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. So we will see a price hike of $50. Now I will talk about the specs and stuff in the next page. So we'll just hold on there and we'll see if it's actually worth the extra $50. Now for QVC, they also gave me a uh, couple freebies. They gave me one car charger and one case. Now for the case, I thought this would have been a nice case for my sister. I mean, it looks beautiful. But once you actually put this on the phone, now since the phone is actually blue, it really does not make a good combination. It looks like a Hoochie Mama phone. So I'm probably going to have to get rid of this. So if you guys are looking for a case, just hit me up, let me know. Now for me, how my brain works, I was thinking instead of re-upping with Mint Sim, I could probably just try out Track From for a whole year. And since I don't really talk that much, this would be fine for me. So you know, I'll get a free phone for the channel there so remember you're getting the phone and we're going to take a look at the value one more time because you're getting the chargers that you need of course but take a look the phone itself could cost you and i'll be covered for a year for phone service so here we go that's how i got myself the moto g6 now let's go ahead and talk about the specs i'm gonna go into the you know full details with the specs now let's start from the beginning now motorola the company who's actually making these phones they claim that the Moto G7 is going to be 50% faster and usually sometimes these numbers don't really add up. Now for the Moto G6, as for the processor, you have a Snapdragon 450 and as for the Moto G7, you have a Snapdragon 632. Now you are getting a huge jump in performance, but it's not like you're getting a flagship processor. Now the 450 was released in June 2017 and the 632 was released in June 2018 and let me just put this in perspective. Now they're both related in a way to the Snapdragon 625. Now for the Moto G6, it is like a Snapdragon 625 but it's just clocked at a lower speed. And the Snapdragon 632 is like the Snapdragon 625 in a way because it's the same thing but it's just boosted with Cairo cores. So you have 4 Cairo Gold 250 cores and 4 Cairo 250 Silver cores. Now as for the Moto G6, you have 8 Cortex-A 53 cores running at 1.8 GHz. Now the thing about the Snapdragon 450, you could definitely record full HD videos at 60 frames per second. But then with the 632, now you can record 4K Ultra HD videos at 30 frames per second, which is a pretty big improvement. Now for the similarities between all three chips, number one, they all have the Adreno 506 GPU, which could be clocked at different speeds. They all have the Hexagon 546 DSP, which is a digital signal processor. They all have a 24 megapixel, 13 megapixel dual camera support. And then they all support full HD displays. They all support Quick Charge 3.0 and USB 3.0 and they all offer 150 megabits per second upload speeds and 300 megabits per second download speeds so there you have it now let's do a quick head-to-head -head battle with the moto g6 and the moto g7 now when it comes to ram the moto g6 has three gigabytes of ram while the moto g7 will have four gigabytes of ram as for storage the moto g6 has 32 gigabytes of storage and the moto g7 has 64 so I believe there's going to be a doubling of storage pretty much because the Moto G7 will be able to record in 4K and as you know 4K video recording does take a lot more storage. 
Now, they both have the same Bluetooth technology, Bluetooth 4.2. As for the Moto G6, you also have a 5 and 12 megapixel shooter with the f1.8. The only difference between the camera system is that the Moto G7 now has a 1.25 microns, while the Moto G6 has 1.4 microns. Now, we do have a 5.7 inch display in full HD on the Moto G6. And the Moto G7, we have a 6.2 inch with a 405 PPI in full HD. Now, I'll give the win to the Moto G6 when it comes to PPI, since it has more pixels. This is actually an iPhone 7 Plus, which is a nice big screen, but this is actually only a 5.5 inch screen size. Again, with the Motorola, you're getting a 5.7, so it's actually larger than the 7 Plus. But look, it's a smaller footprint overall. So larger screen size than a 7 Plus, but a smaller phone. So that's why people love this, because you get that it. big screen experience. But and But I'll give the win to the G7 when it comes to size. Now for the battery, we, they both have a 3000 mAh battery. They both have a Gorilla Glass 3. And like I've mentioned before, the Moto G6 can record at 1080, 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second, while the Moto G7 can do the same thing, but also record at 4K at 30 frames per second. So the Moto G wins when it comes to RAM, storage, and recording in 4K. So if that's important to you, I would probably just wait for the Moto G7. Now, if those things aren't important to you and you don't really use much intensive apps, you could definitely get by with the Moto G6. It's still a capable device. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the performance of the Moto G6. Now, for the real life performance, I have to say when it comes to opening apps, it does a pretty good job. It's not gonna be as fast as a flagship device it's not going to be as powerful as a flagship device, but I can compare it with the Moto E5 Supra. Now for the Moto E5 Supra, I do have to say it does have a bigger screen, and I do prefer the fingerprint reader on the back rather than the front. And when it comes to autofocusing, since this has a laser autofocus, I do see that this actually focuses a lot faster than the Moto G6. It is an upgrade, and you'll see some you know, features like spot color, panorama, portrait mode, only when it comes to the rear cameras, face filters, time lapse, and if we switch to the selfie mode, you'll see there is no portrait mode, but you do have time lapse, group selfie mode, face filters, and slow motion. But like I said, this is a budget device, and for you know watching YouTube videos, browsing the internet, making phone calls, calling, texting, checking your email, checking your Google Now feed. This phone is pretty much capable of doing just that. Now, if you're going to want to do some heavy intensive things, I'm not too sure about that. Now, for the security update on the Moto G6, let's go ahead and check that out. Now, for Motorola, you know that they're usually behind on updates. Now, for this device, it's updated to the November 1st security patch. So, right now, we're kind of due for another update. It's been about... It's going to be about three months since we've had another update. So, hopefully, we get another update before March comes in. So we have to wait and see. You do have your Motorola features on this device as well. And the great thing about this is that it does have Moto Voice. On the Moto E5 Plus, you do not have Moto Voice. On the Moto E5 Plus, you also do not have the one button navigation. And another difference from the Moto E5 Supra is that you also have Moto Key. So instead of typing your password, all you gotta do is scan your fingerprint and the Moto Key will actually fill in your passwords for you. Now, if you're into gaming and whatnot, and you need a budget device, I would recommend the Moto G7. Or if you're looking for a more reasonable price, I would definitely go with the Moto G6 because this is a budget phone and people who are actually looking to buy a budget phone are on a low budget. So for the Moto G6, I would definitely get that if you are on a low budget. And I do have to remind you that once Android Pie becomes available, it's going to boost the performance of this phone. So over time, this phone is going to get faster, not slower. So keep that in mind. So, this is the Moto G6 by Altered Tech. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Do you plan on buying the Moto G6 or are you going to wait for the Moto G7? Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you guys and girls enjoy your Sunday. Peace.